Oh, that guitar sound. It is so quintessentially 80s hard rock hair metal, whatever you want to call it. And it's by this awesome band, Skid Row. When I was a kid, I listened to these albums endlessly. They were just so, so cool. Loved the songs, the solos, the guitar players, and they played really cool guitars as well, which was just phenomenal to watch as a kid. So today I'm going to show you how I dialed in the tones from these two albums with the absolutely awesome Nembrini Audio MP1 plugin. Now today's a kind of special day because in the studio I actually have a couple of real ADA MP1s which my friend Jed lent to me for a couple of weeks. Huge shout out to Jed and a huge thank you to Jed as well for lending these to me. It's been absolutely amazing playing through these and I'm going to be bringing you a video showing you the actual MP1s really really soon so remember to hit the subscribe button hit the bell notification because that's one you're going to want to watch and you know what the Nembrini MP1 plugin sounds so close to the actual unit it's uncanny it's absolutely amazing all right I'm going to head over to my Mac and I'm going to show you exactly how I dialed in these tones Now, a couple of people asked how to use the plugin after my last video on this plugin, which was showing you guys how I dialed in the Nuno Betancourt tone, which you can check out via the link. I think it's up there or up there, one of the corners. I will leave a link for you guys so you can check that out as well if you would like to. And they were asking how to actually use it. Um, and I'm going to show you two methods to use it. I'm using it in my DAW, which is Logic. And I'm also going to show you how to use the Nembrini Audio um, standalone unit as well which is awesome if you don't have a DAW and you want to play through the plugin. So my guitar is going to be plugged directly into the uh, interface, into a, a DI on the front of my interface, which is an Audion ID44. And you might have one called hi -Z, or there might be a switch on your interface, which actually turns one of the channels into an instrument input rather than a mic input. So you want to switch to that instrument input. Then over in Logic, I'm going to create an audio track. And I'm going to go over to where my insert plugins are. And it's really important that you use the plugin as an insert rather than a send. So my inserts are over here where it says audio effects. And I'm going to go over to Nembrini Audio uh, folder on there, find my MP1 plugin. And I'm going to go mono to stereo today. And it's going to bring up the plugin. And then basically, this is going to allow you to play through the plugin. And you can change the parameters, you know, add some reverb, um, add some delay into it as well, um, and get your sound as you want it. And then before you play it, all you need to do is go over to your channel and hit the uh, input monitoring button. Now, it might be different on the DAW you're using. But on Logic, it's just this button which says I, and I'm going to click that, and then it's going to input my guitar signal. So that's how you use it in a DAW. Now, there is a second way to use the plugin as well. If you head over to the Nembrini Audio website, and then go to the products and utilities, there's a live rig standalone plugin, which is actually free to download. So you can just create an account and then download this plugin. And this actually allows you to load the plugin into a standalone unit and just use it. And there are a few more free products um, on the Nembrini website as well, which you can download some pedals and stuff and a tuner and stuff. And they're great. They're fantastic sounding. The Clon Centaur um, uh, model that they've done is phenomenal sounding. The uh, TS-808, love the sound of that. And they've got some other ones here as well. So you can go and check those out while you're on the website. So once you've downloaded it and um, installed it, then you go over to your applications. And if I go to where the Nembrini Audio folder is, there's one next to it saying NA Live Rig. Now if I click that, it's going to bring up the Live Rig. And within here, I can actually load up various uh, amps and effects, uh, depending on the ones that you've installed. So it, it comes like this as stock standard with the crunk amp already loaded into it and dialed in and a little bit of delay as well. And if you double click on the icons up here, it will actually bring them up on the screen and then you can adjust whatever you need to there. Now I'm going to go uh, with deleting all of those. So I'm just going to click here and delete. 
and I'm going to go to an empty session so that I can just load into here my um, MP1 plugin. So I'm going to click insert and it's going to bring up all of the, the plugins and it's going to show me what's installed and not installed. So there's some amps which I don't have installed, some I do, some effects which I have installed and some I don't. So I'm just going to navigate down until I find my MP1 plugin which is over here and I'm going to click on that and it's going to load it into this bay here. So I can then double click here and, and then I can make my adjustments. I can add the delay in here if I want or if I want to use a different delay then I can actually not use the delay in here and just load another one up. But I can basically dial in my sound. So my favorite cab and let's uh, change the microphone here, add in a little bit of room ambience and yeah that looks pretty good there. So I'm just going to leave everything like this and then let's say here I want to add another delay. I'm going to click insert again and I'm going to go over to the Echo Bandit rack here and click on that. And then I'm going to have a separate delay unit which I can dial in the, the tone off as well. Now if I don't have enough gain I can go to this here, press insert. I've already loaded in the uh, NA808 plugin. So now I've got a Tube Screamer in front of an MP1 <laughs> which is pretty phenomenal. So there you go. And then you play it in exactly the same way as you do through your DAW. You plug into the DI on your interface and then play your guitar through your interface through the plugin. That wonderful clean tone on 18 in life. This was a real, real pleasure to dial in. And um, I have the plugin here. This is the uh, plugin that I have on the clean channel. Um, obviously dialed it in differently to my overdrive like sounds. Uh, so I will walk you through this. First thing I did was go over to the voicing control and I changed it to solid state. Now with these buttons, you can basically change it from tube uh, clean distortion or solid state. Solid state just sounded really pristine and that's what I was looking for. So change it over to solid state. Overdrive 1 is at 1.6. Overdrive 2, 3.6. Uh, master gain is at 4.2. Bass is at 12. Mids are at 6. Treble is up at 12. Like I said, I wanted it bright and nice and present. The presence is at 12 as well. And then in the filter section, I have the tight control at 10 o'clock. Then over here on the cabinets, I just used the uh, cabinets which are built into the front end of the uh, GUI here. Uh, and it's the MRH412 green cab with dynamic 57, um, off axis and ribbon 121. And this is the balance of microphones uh, that I have here. Mic 1 is a little bit higher than mic 2. And then the ambience, which is basically the room sound, is a little bit lower. Now the ambience actually adds in uh, quite a lot of mid-range so you can actually control the mid-range by adjusting this. Adds a really nice kind of thickening up of the sound. Then over here on the power amp section have the resonance at about um, 11 o'clock approaching 12 o'clock and the presence at about 2 o'clock here. That gave me that nice bright clean sound. So if I solo up the clean sound <laughs> wonderful. Um, now the reverb delay I used IK Multimedia um, plugins for that Sunset Sound reverb and um, also the uh, tape echo delay but within this I did use the compressor for the clean sound um, so I have the threshold uh, set on the compressor within the MP1 plugin which is a really great addition by the way to the plugin at about two o'clock the ratio is about nine o'clock attack is at about ten o'clock the release just a little over nine o'clock and uh, output is about 10 o'clock here. And I basically just dialed it in until it sounded just as I wanted it to sound and got that wonderful clean sound. And it's a really pristine, beautiful clean sound, which I'm going to be using on other recordings. I know I am because I love that clean sound. All right, the rhythm sound needed to be nice and fat. So uh, this is why I dialed in.
wonderful tone. Uh, I love this plugin. Alrighty, so the voicing is going to be different from the clean channel, obviously. So it's the tube and on the distortion setting. So you, you'll know that by having a look at where this dot is. And this is how it is on the actual unit. There's a little dot which says clean or distortion on the tube. Alrighty, so then on overdrive one, I have it set to four. Uh, overdrive two, 5.5. The master gain is at 7.5. The bass is at 12, the mids are at 6, treble at 6, and the presence is at 12. Now you'll see up here I have Michael Wagner MP1 settings. That's exactly what it is. Michael Wagner shared his settings on a forum some years ago, and those are the settings I dialed in for this tone. And they work great. They sound really, really good. Alrighty, over here in the uh, effects section, um, I just have the, uh, the filter set up. Uh, the tight control a little over nine o'clock approaching 10 o'clock just to take away some of that boominess from the low end. The cab that I use, same one as the clean sound, the MRH412 green, and I have the uh, 57 off axis and then the Royal 121 um, on axis as well. And here's the balance. So the balance between the two microphones, the 57 and the uh, 121, are pretty similar. So upped the um, 121 a little bit more because I wanted more body in the sound. And I upped the ambience as well. Like I said, this adds some mid range and that's exactly what I wanted with this sound. So I upped the ambience, gave me that mid range bump that I wanted as well. Resonance around 10 o'clock, presence around two o'clock. And that gave me my rhythm sound for this track. Alrighty, I did the solo for this one as well. <laughs> I wanted to dial this sound in a little bit different because I wanted it to be a little brighter and to stand out from the other sounds. If I just did the same sound as the rhythm, then they kind of just blend in a little bit too much. So for this tone, I changed the settings ever so slightly. So the voicing's still uh, with tube on the distortion setting. Overdrive one is at four, uh, overdrive two, 5.5. Uh, the master gain is 7.5, so exactly the same as the, the other sound. Uh, the bass is at 12, but the mids I dropped down to 4. I wanted to take some of the mids out of here this time. Um, and then the treble I've upped to 9 because, like I said, I wanted a brighter sound for this. I wanted it to kind of poke out of the mix a little bit more. Presence is at 12. And then in the filter section, just had the tight control at 10 o'clock like the, the other tones. Same cab, MRH412 green. But this time I changed the second microphone. The 57 is still there off axis, but then I changed the second mic to a dynamic 421, which is brighter sounding mic. It um, accentuates the high mids. So the balance changed here as well. So uh, the 57 is predominant. I dropped down the uh, 421 a little bit, and then I dropped down the ambient sound as well because it was adding a little too much body and too much mid range into it. So back that off a little bit to where it sounded great, and um, that's where I left the balance there. And then the presence is, again, at two o'clock, resonance at 10 o'clock. So one more time with that, uh, that lead sound. And make sure you stick around till the end of the video because then you'll get to see the whole of that solo. All right, let's move on to the next track. Midnight Tornado is one of my favorite tracks from the first Skid Row album. It was the heaviest track on the album. That's why I liked it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Just great riff, you know, that whole thing. Just wonderful. I really love that that track, that riff. Just beautiful. 
Alrighty, so uh, the settings here are pretty much the same as um, you heard on 18 and Life Rhythm. So the voicing um, is tube set to distortion, overdrive 1, 4, overdrive 2, 5.5, master gain 7.5, bass is at 12, mids at 6, treble at 6, presence at 12. So Michael Wagner settings. Then the cab is exactly the same, MRH412 green. Mics are the same as well. The balance of the mics is a little bit different this time. Wanted more body on this one. Wanted it to, to be really punchy in the mid-range. So the ambience is up a little bit and the uh, um, one to one setting is a little bit closer to mic one as well. Um, in the power amp section, resonance at 10, presence at um, two o'clock. Same settings. Uh, just worked, so I just left it basically. All right, and the filter is then set to uh, a little under 10 o'clock, so just backed it off a little bit, so had a little bit more kind of low end coming through. And that's it, that gave me that awesome, awesome tone. Lovely, 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 lovely tone. And this is the same tone I used for Youth Gone Wild as well. Alrighty, we're going to move on to the Slave to the Grind album now. Alrighty, home to Slave to the Grind. Now, I did make a tiny bit of a change for this track because it needed to be heavy. I love that. I could sit here and listen to that all day. Alrighty, so uh, the ch change I made here was just to the uh, the settings um, in the uh, MP1, just the EQ curve. Um, this is pretty much the same as the other tracks which I've shown you, so you can check out the settings on there for the cab mics and the balance of the microphones and stuff. If anything, I just pulled out a little bit of the ambience just to bring down the mid-range a little bit. But the power amp section, the filter section, everything would have remained the same. The only change I made was here. So voicing is still the same, tube, distortion, overdrive 1 at 4, um, overdrive 2 at 5.5, master gain at 7.5. So exactly the same. Bass is at 12, and the mids I took out. wanted this to be uh, a little bit more scooped sounding because I was doing the heavy thing. So dropped down the mids to 2. The treble is still at 6, presence at 12. So instead of the mids and the treble being equal like this, mids are coming out a little bit, treble's a little bit higher. Gives a perception that the uh, the treble and the um, presence are a little bit higher as well. So that worked really great for this sound. And also the sound that I used on the track The Threat. Use exactly the same settings as this and you'll get to see that in just a second. For Monkey Business, I used exactly the same settings as I did on 18 and Life. In fact, I duplicated that session, which um, I, I did in um, Logic, and basically just uh, wiped out all the data and then re-recorded it. <laughs> exactly the same sounds, and it worked fantastically well. So there you go. That's how I got the tones for Slave to the Grind as well. Alrighty guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did and you want to see more contents like this, please do remember to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and give it a thumbs up as well. Helps out with the YouTube algorithm. It's absolutely free, which is awesome. And you're going to get to know when new videos come out as well. I'm going to be bringing you more videos of the Nembrini Audio MP1 plugin and the actual real MP1 preamp really, really soon. I'll see you soon with another video. In the meantime, Enjoy the tracks from the first Kid Row album and Slave to the Grind. Yeah! <laughs>